to this Thursday's edition of our podcast. And just a couple quick updates before we jump into our thought. Uh, If you're listening to us by means of one of the podcast platforms, we want to let you know we have begun uh, offering each podcast episode on our YouTube channel. So you can watch the live recording of it if you prefer that method of watching versus listening. Uh, Or if you're watching right now on YouTube, also know that you can subscribe to this podcast on most major podcast platforms. Uh, Just search out Taking Your Next Step and you can subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest episodes. We'll also have some more resources that are coming to our YouTube channel just to be a help and encouragement uh, to be a way for you to know what you believe, why you believe it, and we'll give you some updates as that comes along. Uh, One other quick thing is we offer a weekly Zoom Bible study, uh, Monday nights, 815. Have a great group of young people we meet with. We dive into God's Word. We have a time of prayer and a time of encouragement, really trying to connect together, and also some games just to have some fun. Uh, It's really the highlight of my wife and I's week each week, and even the young people comment that way as well. Uh, But we began this last fall semester just as schools and campuses were closing down. It's not per se, you'd have to be a college student. We just say college age. So we've got a diversity of uh, young people who are meeting with us. But if you're interested in that, Monday's 815, just direct message us on one of our uh, social media platforms, or you can look through our website and email us that way. And we'll get you the Zoom meeting link, the passcode. And we'd love to have you join us uh, for that if you're interested. So we're going to jump into our thought, and it is this, knowing who you are following. Now, have you ever received advice and you say, yes, especially as a young person, you get lots of advice, right? You've got parents, grandparents, you've got uh, friends, professors, you've got pastor and maybe a youth pastor and so forth. Everybody's giving you advice and many times that advice is great. And I'm, I'm an advocate for advice. Yes, I want to listen. I want especially people who have been through and have uh, personal experience, life experience. I want to hear that and I want to be able to apply. But sometimes you get bad advice and unfortunately, sometimes it's painful to learn who's giving you bad advice because you take that advice and you begin to use it and you go, wait, this is bad advice. And so we want to think about uh, the fact that we don't just listen or follow anybody. We want to know who we're listening to. We want to know who's giving us that advice. And I can say for me, I'm a very skeptical person. I don't know if that's a good trait. Uh, But I think it comes a lot from my past. Before I became a believer in Jesus Christ, I was involved pretty heavily uh, in the drug game. And so in order to, you know, to trust someone, to get to know someone, uh, you're very skeptical. You want to make sure people have your best interest. Uh, They're not going to harm you or steal from you or whatever, trying to not get in detail. But even the same today, you you know, you you I have to earn your trust. And just the same, you have to earn my trust in order for me to truly listen to you and want to take advice and so forth. And so we don't want to just believe anything that someone tells us. We don't want to just follow anybody wherever they're telling us to go or how they're trying to influence us. And I want to know why. I mean, the biggest part is I began to grow in my faith. I shared I shared with you, I didn't grow up in church. And so as I began to grow and read and uh, I'd hear teachings and they say, you need to do this and you should act this way or you should treat somebody this way or this is a, a method we do. Why? Why do we do that? Why do we go to church on Sunday morning? Why Why do we? are we supposed to give money? Why, why am I supposed to do this? I mean, I want to know the why, not in a critical way, but in just a real way. Um, I don't want to do anything just because you say or because the tradition says. I want to do it because Jesus said or God's Word says, and I want to do it the way He says that I should do it. And so in our previous episode, we talked about worry. We we're talking about how we can take our next step, taking your next step in our relationship with Jesus Christ and our faith, and we begin to share maybe worry would be one of those things that would hinder us. If I asked you, do you have worry? You'd say, yeah, dumb question. I have plenty of worry, plenty of things to worry about. So we gave the idea, if you can worry, then you can meditate. So you can take worry, that energy and effort, and you can flip it into something positive and productive. You can meditate on good things, meditate on God's Word, meditate on Jesus Christ is one thing we emphasize there. So today we're going to discuss knowing who it is that you're following, as we're talking about being a follower of Jesus Christ. So if we're following Jesus, then we truly need to know who it is we're following. And if we're going to take worry and flip it upside down by meditating, why not meditate on Jesus? Why not meditate on who he is so that we know who exactly it is that we are following? We're going to allow our thoughts to be consumed with Jesus, the one that we're following. Let me read you just three verses 
from Hebrews chapter 12. It says this, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with it so great a cloud of witnesses. It refers back to chapter 11. They're speaking of all uh, those in faith. The great uh, hall of faith is kind of what that uh, chapter is referred to. So because of that, seeing we're compassed about with all those witnesses, all those people who lived a life of faith, let us lay aside every weight and every sin which doth easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And he says, As looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, and lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. And so it says there are two thoughts there, looking unto Jesus and considering him. And I like that word considering because it means to think on, and it doesn't mean just to think on, but it means to think on again and again and again and again. And this is to keep us from being wearied in our minds. Did you see what it said there? Lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. How are we going to be, you know, we're going to be worried to death. We begin to weary and faint in our minds. Uh, we lose hope. We become hopeless, so we begin, begin to be weary in our minds. How are we not going to do that? We're going to consider Him. Consider who? Consider Jesus Christ, the one we're following, the one we're trying to take our next step with. And so thinking on Jesus again and again and again removes worry. It strengthens our faith. Thinking on Jesus again and again reminds us of just who it is we're following. So we want to just take this episode, and we could take episode after episode of just talking about who Jesus is. But we want to just give a few thoughts as we consider who this is we're following. Well, think about Jesus. Who is he? Well, Jesus is God. He's God manifest in the flesh. He is the Son of God, God Almighty. John 1 1 talks about that. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And that's John 1 14. The first chapter of John really talks about who God is, who I mean, who Jesus is as far as him being God. And the word was made flesh. The word is Jesus there, and he dwelt among us. So this is who you are following. It's God in the flesh. He is the creator, Jesus, and sustainer of all things. The Bible says he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the letter A. He's the letter Z. He's the beginning and the end. Think about that. The one that you are following, the one that you are listening to, the one that is guiding you and directing you, this is who he is. He created it all. He created you, and he sustains it all. The Bible says he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And so that's who we are following. It's the great creator of the universe. It's the one who has mapped out all this, who even gives you and I the ability to think, to love, to feel our emotions, our will, our inner being. All of that comes from him. And so he is the creator of it all. This Jesus that you and I are following, he loved you so much. Think of that, that he died for you. He loved you so much that he was willing to give his life for you in order that you might have eternal life. Romans 5, 7, and 8 says, Hey, for a good man, some people uh, probably wouldn't die. For a very righteous person, maybe someone would give their life. Then he goes on in verse 8, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even when we were enemies, against Christ, even when we didn't love him, even when honestly our actions and our behavior and our desire for him was like hatred towards him. Uh, He died for us. He loved us. This is who you are following, this Jesus. I mean, why not take the next step with him? Because he's the creator. He is God. He created it all. He's sustaining it all. And he loves you. And that's a very personal thing. It's not just, oh, Valentine's Day and Cupid and love and hearts and red and candy. It's a true love, an agape love. It's a uh, love that sees through all differences. It sees through all uh, actions. It's unconditional love. It's the highest un. Uh, most holy fashion of love. And that's what Jesus has for us. This is who you're following. Think of this. Jesus refers to himself as our friend in John chapter number 14 and 15. Think about the relationship of a friend. Maybe you're fortunate enough to have some good friends. Not everybody, we, not every Facebook friend is a good friend, right? They're acquaintances. But think about the people that you're friends, those three, four, one, whoever it is that's just closest to you that relationship you have. That's the same relationship that Jesus desires to have with you. And he gives you that invitation, come follow me. 
Follow me and learn of me. Come, follow me and, and listen to my teachings. Help, let me help you. Let me give you guidance. Let me give you love. Let me give you peace. Uh, all these things. He says, but as the creator God of the universe, who's the sustainer of it all, he says, I'm your friend. That's very personal. That's very intimate. He tells us he's gone to prepare a place for us. He, he's not here right now, but he's gone there in heaven. And he's preparing a place for you specifically as a believer in Jesus Christ. He's promised to come again. And he's promised to receive you exactly uh, where you are to himself. And I say this, he's not forgotten you. No matter where you're at or how far even you've tried to run from him, he's not forgotten you. Can I say Jesus is your friend and your friend thinks of you every single day. It's in him that you and I find peace. We find rest for our mind, rest for our troubled souls with all that's going on. My goodness, the worry, the stress, the anxiety, it's real. I mean, there's no denying it with everything that's going on, but Jesus, our friend, because he's the creator of it all, he's able to give us rest, this peace. He says this in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give, uh, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So think about that. Jesus gives us peace. A peace that the world is searching for. I mean, if you ask most people, they want peace. They want the hatred to stop. They want the division to stop. They want the wars to stop. They want the racial injustice and all of that to stop. They want peace. Where does it come from? Jesus offers us that peace. Jesus, the one you're following, is greater than all the evil and all the problems in the world. All the problems that you have in your life that you're experiencing, Jesus is greater than all of those. Think through that. Through him, and you, through him, you and I are more than conquerors. We can overcome anything that this world throws at us. We can be overcomers. Why? Because we're following Jesus. You see, the Christian life is this. It is the unending pursuit of Jesus Christ. The unending. You see, we don't ever get to that point where we, like, we plateau and say, oh, I'm there, I'm good, I can chill, I can chillax. No, it's the unending pursuit of Jesus Christ, the constant pursuit of discovering Him, of growing in our relationship with Him, of, of learning more about Him, growing in that relationship. And we do this how? By thinking on Him again and again and again, especially, remember our previous episode, when worry begins to consume our mind. So we'll apply this with what we call our intentional time. Remember, our word is intentional. Nothing's going to happen by accident. And if we're going to take our next step, we're going to have to be intentional in this. And so we could spend episode after episode talking about who Jesus is. Uh, but what I would like for you to do is to read these chapters, John 13 through 17. Just do that on your own, maybe before we get into next week, if you're following along. But just there's such an intimate moment there Jesus has with his disciples. It's the night before the crucifixions, chapters 13 of 17 of the book of John uh, in the New Testament. And as you read through that, place yourself in those conversations, just like you're there, just like Jesus is speaking to you, just like he's directly talking to you. And take that time to get to know the one that you are trying to take the next step in following.